brain, water, books, and swords. Does that ring a bell? Well, today we're going to be taking a look at none other than Jing Chu himself. As our first 4 star review, I decided Jing Chu is a great option for any team with elemental reactions. It's pretty straightforward and currently on the banner. We're going to go in depth on his skills, talents, builds, constellations, and so on and so forth. But before we get started, don't forget to drop a like, hit subscribe, and let me know who you want to get a review on next. Without further ado, let's get right into it. As per usual, we're going to be taking a look at a level 80 Jing Chu, at talent level 6, base HP 9060, base attack 179, base defense of 671. He builds attack percent as he levels up, and his crit rate and crit damage is unchanged. His HP is pretty low, but it doesn't really matter since he is a sub DPS, so he won't be on the field too much. As for his attack, as he levels up he gets attack percent, so this one doesn't matter too much. As for defense, it doesn't really matter too much. Again, he won't be on the field. As for his ascension and talents, He's going to be using the Ocean It Drops, Silk Flowers, Damage Stained and Ominous Masks, Teaching Guide and Philosophies of Gold, Tale of Boreas, and of course the Crown of Sagehood if you want to get anything to level 10. Now onto his skills, his normal attack isn't anything crazy, it is just a 5 strike and a 2 strike on the charge attack. As for his elemental skill, we have Fatal Rain Screen. On a 21 second cooldown, you deal 2 Hydro Strikes and create the max amount of Rain Swords on your character. The attacks do 235% and 267%, which is pretty good damage considering it's on a 21 second cooldown. As for the Rain Swords, when you get hit, one of the swords breaks and the damage taken is reduced by 25%. You have increased resistance to interruptions when you're getting hit, and 20% of Jing Shu's Hydro Damage bonus is converted into additional damage reduction, a max up to 24%. You can get up to 49% damage reduction. Last but not least, it applies a wet to the character. Now this elemental skill is pretty useful. It's not so much a shield, but a damage reduction or damage mitigation tool. So for example, if you're tanking a big hit, it'll just mitigate up to 49%. And of course, this scales as you level up the talent. As for the max, this one just stays the same. So an application I'm thinking about is when Child does that big lightning attack that insta-kills your unit, you could probably pop Xing Chu, use this, or even pop another shield on top of that for just even extra insurance. And quite possibly, you may live, possibly. <laughs> But yeah, this is a pretty good damage mitigation tool. As for his elemental burst, we have a rain cutter. It's on a 20 second cooldown and 80 energy cost, which is pretty hefty, but it's okay. It creates the max amount of rain swords, and current character's normal attack triggers sword rain attack dealing hydro damage. Each attack does 75.98% damage, so if you're a little confused, every time your current character hits, then you do an additional sword rain attack. This isn't just one time, this is for a duration of 15 seconds. During that 15 seconds while you're hitting, rain cutter swords are just going to keep hitting the enemy constantly and you can get that elemental reaction. This is why Xing Chu is a really really good option for a sub DPS when you're trying to get elemental reactions. Max amount of rain swords remain for the entire duration, so while you're under the ultimate, don't worry about your rain swords breaking, they're just going to stay there the entire time. So the way Xing Chu is going to be working is you have your main DPS, pop in Xing Chu, hit him with the E, you get your damage reduction, or if you already have your ultimate up, just run your ultimate because they both create the max amount of rain swords, pop your main DPS back in, do some damage when the ultimate is over, pop in Jing Chu again, use the Fatal Rain Screen as it is on a long cooldown, you want to pop it in as soon as you can, then you know rinse and repeat. Onto his passives and constellations, Flash of Genius, 25% chance to refund talent materials, this is like your books, your guides and teachings of whatever. Next up we have Hydropathic. When Rain Swords break, heal current character by 6% of Jing Chu's max HP. This can be used not as a main healer, but you know, just, just to get a little extra HP, doesn't hurt to have. And lastly, we have Blades of Mist Raindrops, Xing Chu gains 20% Hydro Damage bonus. This is just, this is crazy, you know, you just get a flat 20% increase in Hydro Damage, and of course that gets converted into Damage Reduction. Very straightforward, but really good bonus on his final passive. As for his Constellations, his C1 increases his Max Rain Swords by 1, meaning you'll take less damage. For an additional hit. As for C2, Rain Cutter duration is increased by 3 seconds and decreases enemy Hydro resistance by 15% for 4 seconds when hit. This is good because it increases your uptime for your ultimate. So since it's on a 15 second duration, plus 3, 18, you're only gonna have a 2 second downtime if you're able to get your ultimate as soon as it's off the cooldown. As for C3, it increases elemental burst by 3 instead of his elemental skill. So this is good. That means your Rain Cutter sword damage is gonna be increased. So this is C3 is a very good spot. C3 is where you're going to be getting your big DPS. As for C4, Fatal Rain Screen damage increased by 50% during Rain Cutter. This is where your elemental skill will start doing a lot more damage. As for C5, the elemental skill increase, already know. And for C6, every third Rain Cutter's damage increases and you get 
plus three energy every time a sword hits an enemy. So this is very good for energy recharge, trying to get that 100% uptime on Jing Chu. C6 is where it's at. So it's constellations, very good value on every single one. You're not missing out on anything. So very, very good value. Last but not least, let's take a look at his weapon and artifact builds. Now I've chosen a lot of weapons for Xing Chu just to make sure everyone has at least one of these. Now for the 5 stars we have Skyward Blade for the energy recharge and upon elemental burst you get a bunch of buffs, attack speed, movement speed, additional damage, you know, not sure if you want to run a 5 star weapon on Xing Chu, some of the 4 stars may be a little bit better, but if you have extra 5 stars Skyward Blade is not a bad option. Not sure if this one would be the best, but I mean if you have one, might as well. As for the 4 star weapons, this one would be more ideal, as this one fits more of the player base. First we have Sacrificial Sword, this one's going to be really good for the skill reset. Of course it has energy recharge so you can get your ult a lot faster. If you can hit your elemental skill twice, I'm sure you're going to be able to get your ultimate. This can only happen once every 30 seconds, so this one is a good option. Of course, if you refine it, the chance goes higher and the duration is lower. Good, good option, especially for Jingchu. This is what I'm running on Jingchu currently. As for the next option, we have Festering Desire. This one is from the Dragon Spine event. This one has energy recharge, increases your elemental skill damage by 16%, elemental skill crit rate by 6. And of course, if you got it to R5, it doubles, so 32% and 12. So very, very good option if you want to get elemental skill damage really high. Next we have Favonius Sword, of course energy recharge, 60% chance to regenerate energy on a crit once every 12 seconds, so good for trying to get your ultimate up. Lastly we have Iron Sting, this is elemental mastery, all damage increased by 6% for 6 seconds on elemental damage, max up to 2 stacks once every 1 second. So all of these are not bad options. Choose whatever you feel is best for your team. And as for 3 star options, we have Harbinger of Dawn, which increases your crit damage, crit rate by 14% when your HP is above 90. This one is a really good option if you really want to get that fat DPS. You could run this, I run this on my Albedo currently. This is a good option regardless of level, because crit damage, right now I'm getting 40% increased crit damage and 28% increased crit rate when my HP is above 90%, so good, good option. And, of course, we have Skyrider as the last one. Energy recharge, increased attack and movement speed on your elemental burst. So a lot of options, whatever level you guys are, whatever level of skill you have, a bunch of different options. For artifacts, we have Noblesse Oblige. It increases your elemental burst damage by 20%, and it increases your party member's attack by 20%. So this one would be pretty optimal, as you would pop your ultimate, get that increased damage, then you pop back to your main DPS, and he gets increased damage because you used your ultimate and you have the Noblest 4-piece set, so very, very good option. Next we have Ocean Conqueror. For this one, I'd only go for the 2-piece because you won't be using his normal attack at all. Only want to get it for the Hydro Damage bonus. Same thing for Wanderer's Troop, the Elemental Mastery. If you're, let's say you're running D. Luke and you want to get that Vaporize, you probably only want to run this as he's not running a Catalyst or a Bow. Next we have Gladiator. This one is just for the attack increase. Again, we're not going to be using the 4 set. And as for our 4 star set, we have Instructor for the Elemental Mastery. And if you do get a 4 piece, it's not too bad because it increases all your party members' Elemental Mastery by 120 for 8 seconds, so increase Elemental Reaction. And last but not least, we have the main stats and substats. You would want to get Elemental Mastery or Attack Percent, Hydro Damage Bonus, and Crit Rate or Crit Damage depending on what your Jingchu needs. As for substats, Crit Rate, Crit Damage, Attack Percent, Elemental Mastery, and Energy Recharge, any of those would be very good options. At least have 2 or 3 on your artifacts to make sure you're still getting some value. But with that being said, that's Jingchu. Very, very good sub DPS. In conclusion, Jing Chu, very very good sub DPS option. If you're ever trying to run any vaporized melt or freeze comps, he is the one to go with. Very very simple playstyle, pop the ultimate so you get the rain cutter attacks on your main DPS normal attacks. Then you have your E, one for the damage and two to create rain swords to reduce damage taken. But the most important part about Jing Chu comes from his ultimate, as those hydro attacks are really really gonna get you a lot of value. Say you're running D Luke, Child, Ganyu, any of those, anybody, any main DPS really, as long as you're utilizing the constant hydro damage, you're going to be getting great value out of Jingchu. That being said, hopefully you guys enjoy. Let me know if you have Jingchu on your team, or how you feel about the character. And let me know any 4 star, 5 star characters you want me to review next. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.